In the annals of ancient history, few conflicts have had as much impact as the Roman Parthian Wars. These wars, spanning several centuries, were a series of intense battles and political maneuverings between two of the most powerful empires of their time, the Roman Republic and the Parthian Empire. The Roman Parthian Wars were more than just a series of military engagements, they were a clash of cultures, ideologies and ways of life. On one side stood the Romans, with their military might and disciplined legions, the very symbol of Western civilization. On the other side were the Parthians, a formidable Eastern power, renowned for their horse archers and their ability to adapt to different terrains and strategies. These wars were instrumental in shaping the geopolitical landscape of the ancient world. They influenced the borders of empires, the paths of trade routes, and the lives of countless individuals. They also marked a significant period in military history, with both sides employing innovative strategies and tactics that would be studied and emulated by future generations. Among the key figures in these wars was Marcus Licinius Crassus, a Roman general known equally for his wealth and his military ambitions. Crassus, despite his successes, would meet a tragic end amidst the sands of Cary, a city in modern-day Turkey. His defeat would be one of the most significant in Roman history, not only for its immediate repercussions, but also for the long-lasting impact it would have on the Roman Republic. The Battle of Cari, fought in 53 BC, was a turning point in the Roman Parthian Wars. It was a battle marked by a series of strategic blunders and missed opportunities, resulting in a devastating defeat for the Romans. Despite being warned about the Parthian cavalry and their archers, Crassus led his troops into an ill-fated battle, the consequences of which would reverberate throughout the empire. Among these battles, one stands out for its devastating defeat for the Romans, the Battle of Cari. This defeat however would also set the stage for one of the most intriguing mysteries of the ancient world, the story of the lost Roman legion of Cari. The Battle of Cari in 53 BC marked a significant defeat for the Roman Republic against the Parthian Empire, this battle was a high-stakes gamble taken by the ambitious Roman general Marcus Licinius Crassus, who was lured by the promise of wealth and glory in the East. Crassus was one of the wealthiest men in Rome, but his military achievements paled in comparison to his fellow triumvirs, Julius Caesar and Pompey the Great. He yearned for a military victory that would secure his legacy. The Parthian Empire, Rome's eastern neighbor, was a tempting target. Rich with trade routes and treasures, it was a prize that many Roman generals dreamt of conquering, but it was also a formidable adversary, with a powerful cavalry and skilled archers. Crassus, undeterred by the warnings of his advisors, decided to march his legions into the heart of the Parthian Empire. The battle took place near the town of Cary, in modern-day Turkey. Crassus, confident of his superior numbers, ignored the Parthians' tactical advantage. The Parthians, led by General Serena, had a formidable cavalry, armed with composite bows, capable of raining arrows on the Romans from a distance. They also employed a military tactic known as the Parthian Shot, where horse archers would feign retreat then turn back to unleash a volley of arrows, catching the Romans off guard. Crassus, underestimating his enemy, led his troops into the open desert. The Romans, encased in heavy armor and unaccustomed to the harsh desert conditions, were sitting ducks for the Parthian archers. Despite their numerical advantage, the Romans were decisively defeated. The aftermath of the Battle of Cari saw heavy losses for the Romans, with many soldiers killed or captured, and it's here our mystery begins. In the wake of the battle, some of the captured Roman soldiers were reportedly relocated to the eastern Parthian border. This was no ordinary relocation. Rather, it was the beginning of an incredible journey that would take them thousands of miles from their homeland to a place far beyond the known world of the Romans. Imagine being one of those Roman soldiers, captured in a devastating defeat and then sent to the frontier of the Parthian Empire. Now, here's where the story takes a fascinating turn into the realm of speculation and mystery. Legend has it that these Roman soldiers eventually became mercenaries for a warlord in what is now northeastern China. Yes, you heard that right, China. This theory was proposed in 1955 by an American archaeologist named Homer H. Dubbs. He suggested that these Roman soldiers were linked to a group of mercenaries who fought in 36 BC for a Chinese warlord. The evidence? The peculiar formation used in a battle in this region showed striking similarities to the Roman Testudo Formation, a defensive arrangement where soldiers would align their shields to form a sort of tortoise-like shell. 
and the clues don't just stop at battle formations. The town of Lycian in China has residents with Caucasian features, some of whom claim descent from these Roman soldiers. Archaeological findings in this region, including Roman-style armor and structures, have added fuel to the fire of these speculations. Now, it's important to remember that this is a theory, not a confirmed historical fact. The journey of these Roman soldiers, from the sands of Kari to the steppes of China, remains a subject of debate among historians. But the possibility, the sheer audacity of such a journey, captures our imagination. Could these Roman soldiers have become mercenaries in the East? And if so, what traces did they leave behind? As we delve deeper into this mystery, we are reminded of the unexpected twists and turns that history can take, and the surprising connections that can be found if we look close enough. In 1955, American archaeologist Homer H. Dubbs put forward a theory that could potentially link these Roman soldiers to a group of mercenaries who fought in 36 BC for a Chinese warlord. This theory, as audacious as it may sound, is not without its merits and certainly deserves our attention. Dubbs pointed to a battle that took place near today's border between Kazakhstan and China. The battle was unique in its strategy and formation, which bore striking resemblance to the Roman Testudo Formation. The Testudo, or Tortoise Formation, was a type of shield wall formation commonly used by the Roman legions during battles, especially for approaching enemy fortifications. Soldiers would align their shields to form a packed formation covered with shields on the front and top. The similarities between this formation and the one used in the battle near China's border were too significant to ignore. But the evidence doesn't stop there. The town of Lycian, located in the Gansu province of China, has been a subject of interest for historians and archaeologists alike. The residents of Lycian exhibit Caucasian features, not typical for the region, and some even claim descent from Roman soldiers. This claim, while difficult to prove definitively, is supported by archaeological findings in the region. Discovery of Roman-style armor, weapons and structures have added fuel to the speculation. The theory of the lost Roman legion ending up in China may seem far-fetched but, the evidence is compelling. It's a historical puzzle that keeps historians and archaeologists engaged and excited. It's a testament to the unpredictability of history and the surprising connections that can emerge from the most unexpected of circumstances. The journey of the Lost Legion, if true, is an incredible tale of survival, adaptation and integration. It's a story that highlights the resilience of these Roman soldiers, who, despite their devastating defeat and subsequent capture, managed to leave a lasting legacy thousands of miles away from their homeland. And so, the remnants of the Lost Roman Legion may have survived in the most unexpected of places. The story of the Lost Legion, if true, is a testament to the unexpected cultural and genetic exchanges in ancient times. This intriguing theory has left a lasting cultural impact, particularly in the town of Likian, located in modern-day China. In this small town, some residents claim descent from these Roman soldiers, boasting distinctive Caucasian features that set them apart from their neighbors. It's a fascinating example of cultural fusion, where the lines between East and West blur in the most unexpected of ways. Moreover, archaeological findings in the region have fueled these speculations. Discoveries of Roman-style armor and structures suggest a link to these ancient warriors, far removed from their homeland. The peculiar formation used in a battle in this region, reminiscent of the Roman Testudo formation, is another intriguing piece of the puzzle. This formation, unique to the Roman military, adds weight to the theory of the Lost Legion's journey to the east. These discoveries present a tantalizing glimpse into a past where Roman soldiers captured and relocated after the Battle of Karai, could have ended up thousands of miles away in China. It's an enthralling theory that adds a layer of depth to our understanding of ancient history and the interconnectivity of cultures. Yet it's not just in the realm of history and archaeology that the story of the Lost Legion resonates. It serves as a symbol of resilience, adaptation and cultural fusion. It's an enduring narrative that continues to captivate historians, archaeologists, and the wider public alike. Whether fact or fiction, the story of the lost Roman legion continues to captivate us, a reminder of how interconnected our world has always been. It's a testament to the enduring power of history and the fascinating stories it holds, waiting to be discovered and told. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this journey through history, please give us a like, subscribe for more fascinating content, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your support inspires us to keep exploring the intriguing stories of our past, See you in the next video.